Luffy cheerfully said, his voice carried away by the gentle sea breeze. Ah, the weather is pretty nice today. Brimming with excitement, the young man had recklessly embarked on a little boat, determined to make friends and assemble his own fleet of pirates. On a nice day like this, who would have thought I'd get into such a disaster? He chuckled, gripping the paddle firmly in his hands. But his amusement swiftly turned into alarm as he noticed a colossal whirlpool looming before him, its swirling vortex as vast as a ship. What a huge whirlpool, he muttered. How careless of me, his voice tinged with concern. As the whirlpool grew stronger, tugging at his tiny boat, Monkey D. Luffy cast a worried glance behind him. There's no one around me, he pondered aloud. It'll be really bad if this boat wrecks. A realization struck him. And on top of that, I can't even swim. Ah, wait a minute. It doesn't really matter if I know how to swim in a situation like this. Swimming won't save him here. However, his realization was in vain, for swimming alone wouldn't save him from the force of the whirlpool's pull. Helpless, Luffy found himself sucked into the relentless maelstrom, his screams blending with the roaring waters until there was nothing but darkness. One Piece. Story was made by Aichiro Oda. Chapter 2. That Boy Straw Hat Luffy. Meanwhile, on a remote island, a love-hearted pink swan pirate ship lay docked, its elegant frame accumulating dust over time. Alvida, a formidable and ruthless pirate captain, pressed her finger against the ship's surface, her brows furrowing in discontent. Why is there so much dust? She questioned, her voice laced with irritation. One of her crew members trembled before her, hastily apologizing. A thousand pardons, Alvida. I thought I've already cleaned the whole deck. I, I'll clean it again, so, so please don't, please don't hit me with your bludgeon. I don't want to die, E. Alvida's eyes narrowed, a glimmer of danger reflecting in them. Don't do what? She inquired, her voice low and threatening. The crew member's fear escalated as she brandished her giant black iron spiked mace, bringing it down upon one of her unfortunate subordinates. Please don't hit me with your bludgeon. I don't want to die. The crew member shrieked, turning her attention to Kobe, a timid pink-haired teenage boy with blue glasses. Alvida posed a question that sent shivers down his spine. Who is the most beautiful in all the seas? She demanded. Trembling, Kobe meekly replied, That'll be you, Alvida. A hint of satisfaction gleamed in her eyes as Alvida affirmed, That's right, and that's why I absolutely hate dirty things, so I don't want the slightest bit of dust on my ship, do you hear me? Her voice carried a resolute determination. I only let you live this long because you know more about navigation than the others. Alvida, a woman of imposing presence, possessed a formidable figure with a bulky, fat build. Her attire exuded authority as she donned a fitted black leather corset adorned with intricate silver embellishments. Her long, flowing black hair cascaded down her back, contrasting with her fair complexion. Sharp, piercing eyes, the color of obsidian, peered out from beneath heavily lined lids, conveying both intelligence and cruelty. Kobe, kneeling down in fear, stammered his gratitude. Yes, yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. However, Alvida's tone turned sharply dismissive as she declared, but other than that, you're totally useless. Now clean my shoes. With a swift motion, she pushed her foot forward, demanding obedience. Kobe complied, following her order with trepidation. Keep cleaning and don't leave any dust behind, Alvida commanded her crew, and they hurriedly obeyed, carrying out her wishes with fear-stricken efficiency. That's enough for now, you piece of garbage, Alvida spat, kicking Kobe with her foot. The blow cracked his glasses, blood trickling from his nose and mouth. Through his pain, Kobe managed to mutter an apology, but Alvida mocked him. If you have time to apologize, why don't you go clean the washroom? Kobe laughed it off, his tears mixing with the bloodstains on his face. Right away, Alvida. 
on my way, he responded, his voice trembling as he walked away, bearing the weight of his mistreatment. Sad and upset, Kobe pushes a barrel he found into Alvida's hideout on land, her flag with a love heart in the center of the skull fixed directly on the center of the storehouses. The hideout exudes an air of danger and secrecy, hidden away from prying eyes. The dilapidated buildings stand as a testament to the pirate crew's lawless existence. As Kobe approaches, three of Alvida's crew members, Hepico, Pepico, and Popico, stop him in his tracks. They tower over him, their intimidating presence casting a shadow on his already troubled state. Hepico bullies him, his voice laced with arrogance and contempt. What? You're saying that barrel of sock he got washed up on shore, Kobe? Hepico jeers, a sneer playing on his lips. Kobe, with a mix of fear and determination, affirms his discovery. Yes, there seems to be something inside it. What should we do with it? Kobe's voice trembles as he tries to maintain composure amidst the crew's menacing gazes. The three crewmates exchange knowing glances, a devious plan forming in their minds. Great, let's all drink together, one of them suggests, a mischievous grin spreading across his face. Kobe's eyes widen in concern, knowing the consequences if their actions are discovered. But if the captain finds out, we'll be... Kobe's voice trails off, his worry palpable. He understands the risks involved in crossing Alvida's path. She won't find out. We're the only ones cleaning the wine cellar, so only us and stupid Kobe will know about this, one of the crewmates reassures, a hint of excitement in his voice. The third crewmate, his voice dripping with mischief, adds, You know what to do, right? Kobe? Kobe, feeling the weight of their expectations, replies nervously, his hands waving in the air. Of, of course, I, I haven't seen anything, so please don't beat me, he says, trying to lighten the tense atmosphere with a weak attempt at humor. Suddenly the barrel comes alive as Luffy bursts out with both hands raised in the air, shocking everyone present. Pepoko, one of the crewmates, can't help but voice his confusion. What the hell? he exclaims, his eyes widening in disbelief. Luffy, seemingly unbothered by the commotion, shouts with joy and relief. What a nice nap that was! Looks like I'm saved! I thought I was gonna die too! Luffy's laughter fills the air, a stark contrast to the tension that had consumed the hideout mere moments ago. Everyone watches him, curiosity etched on their faces. Luffy, breaking the silence, gazes at the bewildered crewmates and asks, Who are you? In unison, the three crewmates respond, their voices filled with incredulity. Who the heck are you? Why would someone be coming out of a wine barrel? Before they can delve deeper into the strange encounter, their attention is diverted as Alvida's club smashes through the hideout, the forceful impact tearing through walls and scattering debris. Alvida's piercing voice rings out, demanding an end to their idleness. The hideout, once a semblance of refuge, is now a scene of destruction. Luffy, unable to maintain his balance, tumbles uncontrollably into the dense forest, while Kobe, driven by a mixture of fear and curiosity, flees after him. Left in the aftermath, the three crewmates cower on the ground, their faces etched with fear. Alvida looms over them, her presence dominating the space. She demands answers, her voice dripping with aggression. I ask you! What's the most beautiful thing in all the seas? Alvida's question hangs heavily in the air, her gaze drilling into their souls. That'll be you for sure, Alvida, the crewmates respond in unison, their words laced with desperation and flattery. Slightly mollified by their answer, Alvida presses further, her voice carrying a dangerous edge. Good, then why are you trying to disobey me? The crewmates scramble to deny the accusations, their voices filled with panic. Eh? Eh? No! We'll never do something like that, they protest, their words trembling with fear. Alvida, unconvinced, sharpens her gaze. Don't play dumb with me. I heard you guys say what a nice nap that was, all the way from the ship. Suddenly, realization dawns on one of the crewmates. He recalls Luffy's words, the puzzle pieces fitting together. Oh, that's right, Captain. There's an invader, he exclaims, his voice tinged with urgency. Another crewmate joins in, confirming the presence of the stranger. That's right, just now Kobe brought a strange guy. Alvida's curiosity peaked. She contemplates the situation, her mind racing with possibilities. What? 
Could it be someone who's trying to catch me and get a reward? Kobe, that brat dares to betray me? Her anger intensifies with each word. A crew member interjects, his voice filled with doubt. Could it be him? That famous... But another crewmate dismisses the notion, cutting off the speculation. Nonsense. I heard that he's still being held captive at the Marine's prison. Alvida, her mind made up, declares her conclusion with conviction. If he's the real thing, he must have escaped by now. That notoriously evil Roranoa Zoro. Elsewhere in the dense forest, sunlight filtered through the towering canopy, casting dappled shadows on the forest floor. Kobe, a young caretaker on the ship of the fearsome pirate, Iron Mace Alvida, stumbled upon an unusual sight. There, amidst the rustling leaves and chirping birds, he noticed a barrel, with a figure trapped inside. Concern etched on his face, Kobe approached the barrel cautiously, calling out to the imprisoned occupant. Um, are you all right? Did you get hurt? Kobe's voice echoed in the quietude of the forest. You got knocked pretty far. A burst of hearty laughter emerged from the barrel as Luffy, the adventurous spirit within, reassured Kobe. I'm fine, just a little surprised, that's all. I'm Luffy. What is this place? Glimmers of curiosity sparkled in Kobe's eyes as he realized that Luffy was oblivious to the dangerous surroundings. This, he replied, gesturing around them, is the breeding ground of the fearsome pirate, Iron Mace Alvida. I'm a caretaker on this ship. My name is Kobe. As Luffy emerged from the confinements of the barrel, he glanced at his rescuer and nonchalantly dismissed the significance of their location. I see. Actually, that's not important. Perplexed by Luffy's indifference, Kobe's brows furrowed in confusion. Before he could voice his thoughts, Luffy interjected, his attention focused on their immediate predicament. Do you have a small boat? Mine got caught in the whirlpool. Surprise rippled through Kobe's expression his voice tinged with disbelief. Whirl, whirlpool? You were caught in a whirlpool? Luffy's affirmative nod sent shivers down Kobe's spine, vividly recalling the treacherous nature of such a phenomenon. With a mix of awe and concern, Kobe stammered, a normal person would have died already. You, you want a small boat? Well, I have one, but... With a hint of suspicion, Luffy examined the boat presented to him by Kobe, a humble, handcrafted vessel that had been a secret labor. His curiosity piqued, Luffy questioned, What's this, a coffin? Undeterred by Luffy's remark, Kobe explained the boat's significance, a glimmer of regret shadowing his eyes. That's a boat I built secretly for two years. Luffy remarked, Spent two years. You don't want it anymore? A heavy sigh escaped Kobe's lips as he contemplated his own suppressed desires and faltering courage. Yeah, I don't want it anymore. I was going to run away in this, but I don't have the guts to do it. Looks like I'm going to be a caretaker my whole life. Although, I do have something else I want to do. Luffy's carefree demeanor remained unfazed as he offered an unexpected piece of advice. Then you should leave. Kobe's panic-stricken eyes widened, and he vehemently shook his head. No, no, I can't. It'll never work. Whenever I think of Alvita finding out, my legs turn all mushy. I get so scared. In a rush of emotions, Kobe recounted the circumstances that had led him to his current plight. That day, I was only fishing, but I accidentally walked onto this ship, and I had to become a caretaker on the ship these two years to stay alive. Unfazed by Kobe's vulnerability, Luffy's straightforward nature came to the forefront. You're pretty stupid and useless, and you seem kind of wimpy, too. I don't like you, he quipped, laughter punctuating his words. Kobe winced at Luffy's blunt assessment, but amidst the pain, he found a sliver of truth. But you're right. If only I'm brave enough. Hey, Luffy, why are you sailing? With a gleam of determination in his eyes, Luffy disclosed his audacious dream. I want to become the Pirate King! His smile radiated with unwavering conviction. Kobe's disbelief echoed in his incredulous tone. What? Pirate King was the title of someone who has had everything in this world. Are you telling me that you're looking for the world's greatest treasure, the One Piece? You want to die or something? All the pirates in the world are looking for that treasure. Luffy's response carried an air of nonchalance as he dismissed the risks. Well, so am I. 
The weight of Luffy's words crashed upon Kobe, leaving him stunned and bewildered. Impossible, absolutely impossible, utterly, utterly impossible. To become the Pirate King in the Pirate Era, there is no chance. Utterly impossible. Without warning, Luffy's fist collided with Kobe's head, leaving a sizable bruise on his forehead. The pain brought forth an indignant cry from Kobe. Ow! Why'd you hit me? Unfazed by Kobe's agony, Luffy's voice reverberated with unfiltered honesty. Because I couldn't stand you. As Kobe rolled on the ground, an air of resignation settled within him, accompanied by a wistful chuckle. Oh, well, I'm used to it anyway. Luffy's declaration resonated through the clearing, igniting a flicker of understanding within Kobe. I'm not afraid of dying. Perplexed, Kobe's gaze locked with Luffy's as he searched for meaning behind those words. Luffy continued, unwaveringly staring at his cherished straw hat. Because it's my dream, and that's why I won't mind dying for it. In a moment of clarity, Kobe found himself in awe of Luffy's resolute determination. His thoughts raced, captivated by such astounding resolution. Such amazing resolution. Won't even mind death? Luffy's voice broke the silence, laden with unwavering conviction. Besides, I think I can do it. Although it could get pretty tough. A surge of hope coursed through Kobe's veins as he considered the weight of Luffy's words. I've never thought of that. His voice trailed off, lost in a sea of newfound possibilities. Then, with a tentative whisper, he voiced his own contemplations. Will I also be able to accomplish my dream? If I'm willing to die. Captivated by Kobe's sudden introspection, Luffy met his gaze, waiting for an explanation. What? With a newfound sense of purpose and resolve, Kobe boldly declared his own aspirations, tears streaming down his face. Will I be able to become a Marine? Perplexed by Kobe's unexpected dream, Luffy sought clarification. A Marine? Tears of determination mingled with Kobe's answer as he poured his heart out. Luffy, I know it means that we'll be enemies, but joining the Marines and catching bad guys has always been my dream. Do you think I can do it? Luffy, ever straightforward, offered no promises or assurances. I wouldn't know. Undeterred, Kobe's resolve solidified, his voice ringing with unyielding determination. I have to at least try. I'd rather die trying to get out of here and join the Marines than stay here and be a caretaker my entire life. And then, Alvida, I'll be able to arrest someone like Alvida. His voice resounded with newfound conviction and purpose. Who did you say you are going to arrest, Kobe? Alvida's voice boomed a tempestuous storm echoing in the air. Her words dripped with venom and a clear warning of the power she wielded. Luffy, a carefree and adventurous young man, regarded Alvida with an air of nonchalance. The destruction of Kobe's boat seemed inconsequential to him, as if it were merely a fleeting inconvenience. Kobe's heart sank as he realized the magnitude of the situation. My boat... Kobe muttered to himself, the weight of his shattered dreams pressing down upon him like an anchor dragging him beneath the waves. Unperturbed by Kobe's distress, Alvida sneered triumphantly. You think you can escape from me? Is that who you hired to capture me? He doesn't seem to be Roronoa Zoro, she taunted. Her words hung heavy in the air, thick with malice and a twisted sense of amusement. Before Kobe could gather his thoughts, Alvida continued her assault, her anger swelling with each passing moment. Anyway, before you die, I'm going to ask you, what's the most beautiful thing in the sea, Kobe? Her question hung like a blade poised to strike, an inescapable trap. Sweat dripped down Kobe's face, his nerves tangling like seaweed caught in a relentless current. Rubbing his hand nervously behind his pink hair, he mustered a trembling laugh and stammered, Of, of course, that'll be... Interrupting Kobe's feeble response, Luffy's voice rang out with an unexpected interruption. Who's this rude woman? He interjected, his curiosity piqued by the audacity of Alvida's presence. Alvida's fury flared, a tempest unleashed upon an unassuming world. Her crewmates, witnessing the unfolding confrontation, responded with indignant cries. That kid! He dares to- Seizing the moment, Kobe shouted at Luffy, his body trembling with urgency. Luffy, quick, repeat after me, his voice quivered, carrying a desperate plea for assistance. In all the seas, this lady is the most. Kobe's voice trailed off, uncertainty gripping his words. In that fleeting moment, 
Kobe's thoughts danced to a memory, a recollection of Luffy's own dream, a dream that involved risking everything for what one believed in. Summoning newfound courage, Kobe's voice rose, his words crashing against the shore of Alvida's rage. The rudest, damned bitch, he shouted with a ferocity that belied his former meekness. Alvida's gaze turned deadly, her silence a harbinger of impending doom. Luffy, however, found humor in the chaos, laughing uproariously at the audacity of his companion. You little brat! Alvida's rage resounded like thunder, a storm of fury unleashed upon the world. Kobe, his tears mingling with the salt water of the sea, whispered to himself through his trembling sobs, Don't regret it. I've already told myself to fight for my dream. In a fit of anger, Alvida struck out at Kobe, but before her blow could land, Luffy pushed Kobe back with a firm hand, shielding him from harm. Well said, Kobe. Now get behind me, Luffy commanded, his voice a lifeline amidst the chaos. Alvida's declaration hung in the air like a looming tempest. Both of you have to die! Her words carried the weight of a thousand storms, threatening to engulf them in a sea of oblivion. Unfazed by Alvida's wrath, Luffy leaned his head forward, a mischievous glint in his eyes. Alvida's mace crashed down upon him, only to bounce harmlessly off his rubberized body. It's useless against me because my body is rubber, Luffy proclaimed, his smirk triumphant. Alvida stared in disbelief, her bludgeon falling from nerveless hands. That's impossible, my bludgeon, she exclaimed, astonishment etching deep lines upon her face. The crewmates surrounding them mirrored her surprise, their eyes wide with disbelief as Luffy stood unscathed. Luffy coiled his right arm back, a tension building within his elastic muscles. Gomu, Gomu no, pistol, he declared, his voice a battle cry. With a single punch, he sent Alvida crashing to the floor, unconscious and defeated. The crewmates gasped, their voices a chorus of disbelief. His arm, his arm extended, Captain. Alvida was beaten by that monster, they exclaimed in hushed whispers, their fear mingled with awe. Pointing a finger at Alvida's crewmates, Luffy issued a command, his voice brimming with authority. Prepare a boat for Kobe, he wants to join the Marines, so stay out of his way. His words hung in the air, a stark reminder of the power he commanded. Alvida's crewmates, cowed by Luffy's presence, nodded their reluctant agreement. Meanwhile, Luffy laughed tears mixing with the droplets falling from Kobe's cheeks, a symphony of relief and newfound hope echoing across the vast expanse of the sea. Sometime later, Luffy and Kobe found themselves sailing upon a new boat, venturing out to sea. The sun dipped below the horizon, casting an ethereal glow upon the waters as they embarked on their shared journey. Kobe couldn't contain his awe as he observed Luffy, the bearer of the devil fruit. You actually have the rubber rubber fruit. Awesome, he exclaimed, his voice filled with a mixture of admiration and disbelief. However, Kobe's excitement was tinged with concern as he turned his attention to the path that lay ahead. But, Luffy, if you're looking for the one piece, that means you have to get into the grand line, right? He questioned, his voice laced with uncertainty. Luffy, sitting at the head of the boat, nodded, his determination shining bright in his eyes. Kobe continued, but that place is known as the Pirate's Graveyard. Luffy pushed forward, saying, yeah, that's why I need a strong crew, and one of them is being held captive at the very place you mentioned, he replied, his words infused with a sense of purpose. Kobe's eyes widened in realization. You mean, Roranoa Zoro? He responded, his voice tinged with apprehension. The tales of Zoro's strength had reached even the furthest corners of the sea, painting him as a fearsome and unstoppable force. Luffy's optimism remained unyielding. If he's a good guy, I'd ask him to join me, he declared, his voice unwavering in its certainty. Kobe couldn't help but scoff, his doubts still lingering. What? You're dreaming again. You can't. He's like a monster, he exclaimed, his voice filled with both incredulity and concern. With a resolute expression, Luffy faced Kobe his gaze filled with determination. We can't be sure about that yet, he asserted, his unwavering belief in the potential goodness of others shining through. The little boat sailed forth, a speck in the vastness of the sea, as Luffy and Kobe made their way towards the Marine's base. 
The winds whispered tales of adventure and danger, their spirits unyielding, ready to face whatever awaited them on their quest for the Grand Line.